Trevor Zegers performing magic once again, and it gets called back? Yeesh, that's about as painful as a toenail falling off. We'll talk about that on today's bonus edition of Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Yeah. Your Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everyone, to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jason J.D. Hernandez, covering hockey for over a decade. Thanking you for making this your first podcast. Don't forget, this is on pretty much every platform you could think of, including Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Podbean, YouTube. Hit that bell, baby. You can follow me on Twitter at StimpyJD. Show's Twitter's at LO underscore Ducks. If you've noticed at SimpyJD, yeah, I haven't been tweeting a whole lot because I haven't been doing a whole lot the past couple of days. I'll just say why now. Um, yeah, that, that toenail down there is kind of halfway off. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's going. So um, I know I mentioned this earlier in the week, but yeah, there's no way I can do the Ducks 5K if, you know, I'm hurting like that. I'm, I'm limping pretty pretty bad so you know no ducks 5k for me this year hopefully next year yeah so yeah I, I i honestly just have to take care of myself i mean I, and i also do have to work a game saturday night and a game sunday morning so trying to squeeze all of that in with a bum toe is not going to do anyone any favor it's not going to do me any good so you know just want to be safe and all that jazz all right. Yeah, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about what happened last night, shall we? Yeah. I'm going to start just with what everybody's talking about. I'm going to take up on purpose an entire segment just to talk about the man, the myth, the legend, the now star on Mighty Ducks Game Changers, Trevor Zegers. Yeah, you thought I would let that go? <laughs> no way. Trevor Zegers performed sorcery once again, but this time he finally did it at the Ponda. In the second period, Trevor Zegers pulled off another fantastic goal. His third, his third lacrosse goal, and it didn't count. It didn't freaking count. Are you kidding me? Minnesota actually... They did that. They said, oh, no, you know what? That was a great, that was great. It was a highlight, but we don't want that highlight against us. No, it doesn't count. So, of course, a freaking course, it doesn't count. Ugh. I mean, I pretty much said, holy, you know what? And it was when I finally got back in my room and I turned on TV. And not more than two minutes later, Trevor Zegris pulled off that magic act. And this was in the start of the second period, and he did this in stride, too. Pulling this off against Philip Gustafson. And Trevor did this one top shelf. He put the puck on his stick, went wrapped right around the goal, and instead of going into the back of the net, he went top shelf. That thing went in and out so quickly that you could barely tell it was a goal. But as soon as I saw it, I went, oh, holy crap. He just did that again. He, he did it again. Another magical Michigan goal. Another lacrosse. His third one. If you recall, he pulled off a, well, he's pulled off a couple of Michigans, um, you know, on the road. My favorite one being the one at Montreal in front of absolutely no one. This one in front of a good crowd. Behold the phone. The Minnesota Wilds coach, Dean Evison, said, whoa, 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 wait, hold on, hold on. I think that might be offsides. I would like to challenge that. So, the head ref, Trevor Hansen, I think it was Hansen on that one. He had to utter those words that Minnesota is challenging for offside. Crowd got a little bit ticked off, and rightly so. We looked on the replay, and who is that? Who's that on the offside? Oh, that's Dmitry Kulikov. Ugh. So Kulikov, 
right there and it gets called off dang can't believe that freaking got called off that's so disappointing and that was a that was a great goal too i mean he picked it up just like on the loose end and it was right there and every everybody is right there i mean cam fowler klingberg was there frank was there like i think fowler was the first one there when he realized what the hell had happened that that goal was a thing of beauty top shelf but kulikov kulikov jumped the gun so that goal did not count that goal's kind of going to get forgotten about a little bit because officially now trevor zegras only has two lacrosse goals to his credit oh darn only two that's it you mean to tell me the one against minnesota is not going to count everybody went ballistic online I wasn't too thrilled either. I honestly thought, well, just another great highlight. But no. And it got called back. <sighs> that, the one against Montreal, against Montembeau, that one was so in stride. And that one was beautiful. That one was probably one of my favorites. Then there was the one at Arizona last season where he had to whip the puck around Sonny Milano. I think that one was the most impressive one because he had to go around a player. Unfortunately, that was the one that resulted in that big brouhaha that injured Troy Terry and all that mess. So I love that lacrosse goal, but I remember everything that happened after it. This one could have been just a cherry on top and finally did it at home and everyone could say, man, this is the best one ever. And it got called back. Hockey, what what are you doing? Like, damn. I I wanted that one so bad for Trevor Zegers. I wanted that one so bad for the fans, and it doesn't count. That that's a giant middle finger. I I, I hate it. Just just hate it. What what else? I really just am disgust not disgusted with, but hate the fact that you're gonna have. All these people online saying it was a lacrosse goal or was it oh it's just another fancy play i mean th those people are still out there and i'm here to tell you guys y'all suck <laughs> i'm just gonna say it y'all suck for thinking that it's hot dogging the point of the game is to score goals trevor zegris is there to score goals and help his team win at the time that would have given the ducks a good lead and that would have given them a humongous boost. The look on their faces when that goal was called back. You would think that someone just kicked a puppy or something. That's how bad it was. R ridiculous. Before I head into an intermission, just want to briefly talk. This is going to be a long first segment, by the way. I got to talk about Trevor Zegers on game. Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to save that next. So we'll talk about Trevor Zegers more after the first intermission. But first, let's talk about Bet Online, which is the one place that has you covered and the one place that we trust. And especially if you're in a state that actually has betting, unlike California, because, hey, they don't want gambling in their state. But, hey, if you live in a state other than California, <laughs> the irony, then head over to Bet Online right now, which has more props, odds, and lines than ever before, including the NBA, which is in full swing. The NHL is in full swing. Maybe you want to bet that Zegra scores another lacrosse goal this season. Maybe they'll put that line up. You know what? Maybe I'll contact them and say, what are the odds that Zegra scores lacrosse goal this season? Hmm. I bet there's some pretty good odds there. Or maybe you could bet on who's going to make the Stanley Cup, who's going to make the NBA Finals. You have football there. You have the MMA, boxing, all that stuff. So if you want to check out all the latest lines, head over to Bet Online using either your mobile device or your laptop. Bet Online is the official online sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network, and please gamble responsibly, folks. Welcome back to the party. This is Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. You're locked in with Jason J.D. Hernandez. So we're going to kind of rush through this a little bit because I do have to fly home tonight. So I'm going to try, try to get this bonus episode up today. Try as I might. And we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to continue talking about Trevor Zegers because 
I don't want to talk about the game as a whole too much. The Ducks lost. I woke up and saw that. They lost to Minnesota again, four to one. They almost allowed forty shots, but I'll I'll save that for a little like a couple minutes. So Trevor Zegras, Troy Terry, and Max Jones were all featured in a little segment on my new favorite show, Mighty Ducks Game Changers. If you remember last season, that Disney Plus series documented the rise of the Mighty Ducks, the youth hockey team, and it's a fun time. And you had to come back from Coach Gordon Bombay. That was really cool. This season, no Coach Bombay, but we had the actual Mighty Ducks team take a trip out to California, and the coach played by one of my favorites, Lauren Graham. She brought the team out, and coming out of the tunnel was Trevor Zegris with that flow, Troy Terry, who I think is a star already, and everybody's favorite, Max Jones. And I love the portrayal of Max Jones just kind of riding the stick like a pony. I thought that was brilliant. Trevor Zegris doing his stick handling and his little tricks, and Troy Terry showing off his moves and sh showing his scoring prowess. I think those three fit perfectly. I mean, Trevor Zegris is a no-brainer. Trevor Zegris is one of the faces of the league. He is the face of NHL 23. He's already very marketable. You saw the Chell commercial where, you know, you hear, Trevor, Chell, and then you could hear, um, you could hear them calling out Hillary Knight saying, you know, Chell, and then you see him, Chell, Chell, Chell. One of, one of a many great commercials with Trevor Zegris. It's a good one. This appearance, great, great job by all three. Z just kind of being himself <laughs> in a sense. He didn't have to do too much acting there. He's, he's a natural. He fits right in with being in SoCal and being marketable. And that's something that you want for the league. You want someone that is going to be that marketable and is going to come off as being very friendly. And I'm sure Trevor Zegers is hopefully one of the friendlier guys out there. You know, I watched the whole thing with Z and his brother playing golf. There's that commercial as well. He just seems like such a nice guy. And from what I saw when he played in San Diego, you know, he was, he was really cool with everyone just kind of like doing his own business. But he seemed really friendly down when he was a San Diego goal as well. And he did the work and he practiced his craft so much. That lacrosse goal, he practices that during warmups. The stick handling stuff, he does that during warmups. If you haven't seen his warmup routine, look at all 16 minutes of the warmup and see how he does that. It's truly a thing of beauty. So, you know, you had Zegris. Troy Terry, I think, who is still my favorite player on the Ducks. I mean, I love Zegris, but Troy Terry is still my favorite, mainly because he is the guy that gets the job done. He's on pace for about 100 points this season. I'll talk more about that on a later podcast. But Troy Terry, I truly think, is a star in this league. And I still think he could could get 40 goals this season. He's just someone that I think you can depend on for quick scoring. Someone that you can count on to get a quick goal or two. And I just, I've always liked Troy, Troy Terry's game. Even though some would say he's a little bit systematic. I could see that early on in his career. But he's grown to be more diverse in his game. And to have him on there as well, that shows you how much of a star he is. And Troy Terry's also starting to become a little bit more marketable as well. Starting to get some play, starting to get some notice. Once he starts continuing to get those big point seasons, 70, 80, 90 point seasons, maybe even a 100 point season, he will be more noticeable. And that's nothing but a good thing for the Ducks. And Max Jones. If you don't already follow Max Jones on Twitter. <laughs> oh my gosh. Max Jones will respond to almost everybody. And I love that about him. And you could tell that he's the he's he's like me in a, in a way. Where he loves the support. And he loves anyone just tweeting at him. Or sending him like good messages and good vibes. You know you could tell that he loves the fans. And he loves being that dispersonable guy. 
So to have those three, thing of beauty. Absolutely loved it. Okay. I've kind of stalled a little bit talking about the game. So let's talk about the game. Because we're here. And we hate that the Ducks lost again. Minnesota Wild got shut out at Staples Center the other night. They lost one nothing to the Los Angeles Kings. Minnesota started the first period without scoring. Can you tell they were a little bit irate at the end of that first period? You could definitely tell by the time the game was towards the end. Minnesota was starting to get really frustrated. They were starting to hit really hard. They were starting to take stupid penalties, which they were. They took some pretty stupid penalties on this game. The Tyson Jost penalty against McTavish, that was not a smart penalty. The uh, penalty that Troy Terry drew, not a good penalty for Minnesota. The Ducks had plenty of power play chances and did not score on any of them because their special teams are awful. And also because their special teams are awful, they allowed not one but two power play goals. Stop me if you've heard this before. The Ducks have allowed another power play goal. Again, stop me if you've heard this before. The Ducks are among the worst special teams in the league. Stop me if you've heard this before. The Ducks are among the worst teams in penalty killing. They're second to last. 63.6%. The only team worse is still Vancouver. 61.7. Yippee Kaye. Power play. They're second to last. Last place is the Columbus Blue Jackets, who finally scored a power play goal. Hallelujah for them. But Anaheim is 31st in power play, 31st in penalty kill. When you combine the net power play and net penalty kill, they are dead last. Special teams are just not doing it for the Ducks. That's that's a continual problem. It, it's really bad. And allowing that many shots again, 39 shots on goal. Again, I've mentioned this several times. Broken record once again. They are allowing over 40 shots per game. By far the most in the league. This is not It's not a good trend. It is not a good trend. Defensively, they need help. They, they need something different defensively. And special teams are not going to do it. They're not cutting it there. So what do you do if you're Dallas Eakins? What do you do if you're the coaching staff? I mean, what do you need to change around? That's going to be a big question. Maybe you got to change up who you put out there in penalty kill. Maybe you put Mason McTavish out there a little bit more. And I think this is where the Ducks are going to really miss Jamie Drysdale for this season. Is Drysdale was actually pretty good at the penalty kill when he was out there. I mean, not at first, but there was that stretch of about two, three games where Drysdale got more PK time. And it was very effective. Something that I wanted to see more of. And McTavish, I always thought, could be a specialty guy as far as penalty killing. And the fact that we have not seen him out there for that. Does Dallas Eakins realize that Mason McTavish is a good a good player to have on the kill? Did he not watch the OHL playoffs last season when McTavish, you know, nearly got shorties? Did he not watch the OHL championship game when McTavish got the majority of the PK minutes and was instrumental in helping the Hamilton Bulldogs win their OHL championship? Did he not watch Memorial Cup when McTavish was still out there shorthanded? Now, I get that McTavish is out there during the power play, but maybe, switch, maybe it's time to switch it up. You know... Use McTavish more on the PK instead of the power play just to change things up. Why not put, I don't know, Pavel Regenda out there? Who, by the way, got his first NHL goal. What was he doing in San Diego all that time? Well, you know what? Regenda, first NHL goal. Congratulations. Well deserved. But I'm just saying, maybe, maybe throw some other guys out there on the power play. You know, throw crap on the wall, see what sticks. That's all I'm saying. Final score, 4-1. to one. Ducks lose again. It, it, it's rough right now, guys. It, it's really, really rough 
to watch this team because that's another loss. They're second in a row. They've got to right the ship. I don't know how they're going to do it, but they've got to do it somehow. Let's look ahead at the schedule, shall we? Let's do that. Because why not? They play at home Saturday night against the Blackhawks. Then they have a game Tuesday night against the Red Wings. They can beat both those teams. They can do it. Let's see what happens in the next two games. All right, that's going to do it for today's podcast. Once again, thank you all so much for listening and watching. This podcast is free and available across all platforms, including Citrus, Spotify, Odyssey, etc., etc. You can follow me on Twitter at StimpyJD. The show's Twitter is at LO underscore Ducks. You could follow me on Twitter at StimpyJD. I mentioned that because it's fun to check out. And you could see that I ran with the duck. It's so fun. You could email me at LockedOnAnaheimDucks at gmail.com. I mentioned this before. Unfortunately, not doing the Ducks 5K this weekend. Just got to take care of myself right now. <laughs> Maybe lay off the running just a little bit. Yeah, it is what it is. And also, once again, shout shout out to uh, Tom Arnell, who I ran with at the marathon. Really cool to, you know, meet someone that listens to Locked On. So just want to thank Tom once again for talking hockey with me on that marathon. Super proud of it. Can't wait to do my next marathon. I would love to do this New York marathon again. It's It's a lot of fun. You all should check it out. Once again, thank you all so much for your continued support. It is greatly appreciated. For Locked On Anaheim Ducks, I'm Jason J.D. Hernandez saying I am out of here. Please remember to be safe out there, be kind to one another, and Ducks and myself fly together. Flying back to SoCal, baby.